Welcome to my channel where you're going to get quick tips to grow your online business. So let's get started. Greetings, entrepreneurs. My name is Michelle Rowley, aka The Savvypreneur, and I equip entrepreneurs with tips, tools, and strategies to help them meet their business goals and objectives to build a business that you love. So let's get started in today's uh, tips that I'm going to bring to you. And today's is four reasons why entrepreneurs fail at creating content. Now, this is a continuation of last week's uh, tips. I gave you three, and those tips were in the area of content creation as well. And they um, had the theme of goal setting, knowing your goals and objectives, brainstorming, meaning you have to brainstorm in order to pull out ideas to make sure that your content is hitting its mark and questions that you need to ask yourself in the midst of creating content. So if you missed that video, it's gonna be linked up here and that way you can go and you can get those tips. So this way it will just be a flow of the information that I'm giving you. So let's get into today's topic of the four reasons why entrepreneurs fail at or struggle at making or creating content for their target audience. Now, the first thing is research. When you are coming into an online space, you have to research because if not, you will get lost in the vanity metrics. You'll get lost in trying to perform at the level somebody else is performing if you have not laid your foundation. And that is so important as an entrepreneur. You have to know who your product or service is for. It's no longer about, well, I'll sell to anybody who wants it because then I mean, no, I don't believe no one has a marketing budget that big. And even large companies who do put out millions of dollars for their marketing, you know, their ads and things of that nature, they're only specifically honing in to one specific target audience. And that is who they've done the research on. So if you want to kind of work backwards with that, I would say, who is the product for that you are creating. And I'll give you a couple examples. For instance, when you look at subscription models like Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Stars, they are subscription models. And what do they do? They provide entertainment at a monthly fee. So Netflix already knows who their target audience is. And so they put out programming that you want to see. And if you know that your favorite show is going to be on Netflix, then it's going to be a no-brainer but to join Netflix because that show is not going to pop up on any other network because Netflix has bought the rights for it to appear on their platform. So they know exactly who their target audience is, right? So that's the same thing with you. You have to know who it is that you're speaking to. And when you are creating something, you have to know, I'm creating this with the mindset, is it for moms? Is it for single women? Again, let me give you another example, gym memberships. When you look at a gym membership and there are weight loss uh, plans, you see Weight Watchers and all these different types of, of businesses that help you get into shape. Now they're all in the industry of getting fit from a gym membership to Weight Watchers and um, maybe a meal plan. And now they have this new thing called the mirror where you can basically get this mirror. It has all of these different types of trainings on it. You can even have a personal trainer to train you. And what is that? niche down to, to be able to do exercises in your own home, because with us living in a pandemic, it is strategically designed for those who still want to get a workout, still maybe want to have a coach or trainer or join certain classes without having to go out of their home. So do you understand how they have researched and they have really honed down who their target audience is? And it's no different from what you need to do in your own business. You have to know who that product or service is for. So this way, when you create your messaging, when you create whatever headlines, or you go to post on your social media platforms, you know exactly who it is that you're speaking to. Because if you're just putting out messages, oh, you know, download my free, you know, training guide or join or sign up for this course, but you're not specifically saying who it's for, then it's going to fall flat because people don't have the time to sit there and kind of figure out what you're trying to say to them. They're basically want to know, like, if you have what I need, then just say it. And I'll give you one more example because I want to give you examples so you understand and it will help you to do that deep dive when you are doing your research. Now, let's look at another business like Amazon. Now, Amazon Prime 
has now for those who are an Amazon Prime member, why do you become an Amazon Prime member? I mean, you could go the route of having your package ship regular mail or UPS, but you join Amazon because either you want the ability to get your product in your hand at a quicker time, sometimes the next day. So that's the reason why you do it for convenience. So they already know that not only are we going to offer our customers you know, loads of different type of products on our website, but we're going to also offer them, you know, uh, shipping that is at a faster rate. And then they even throw in prime, you know, with the movies, you get the movies, you get so much value that they pack into that prime membership. So this is what you need to be examining when you are looking at other businesses, when it comes to creating content. Who is it for? How will it help them? What solution will it provide? Because in the example of Netflix, it's not so much a pain point, but the example there is maybe somebody just wants to wind down. They don't want to think about what's going on in their world. They just want to kind of zone out. So they'll go and they'll watch something on demand. It is still meeting a need. It is bringing them into a space where they can feel some type of sense of normalcy. They can feel some type of sense of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, getting through it through my favorite show. I think you know where I'm going with that, but that is very key. Now, the next thing is to study your competitors, because I believe there your competitors can tell you a lot about maybe what it is that you can provide that they're not providing. So if you look at it in the place of, okay, what is my competition offering that that you know or that I can basically go above and beyond. What is it that they're not offering? You know, how is their customer service? Let me go and see some of the reviews because we can see people put out testimonials because we want to see, you know, people want to be drawn into that product or that service. But do we really understand what things may have not gone right, not that we're hoping something goes wrong with our competition, but we want to see certain gaps that they may have in their service or maybe certain things they're not offering. So now you can come in and you can fill that gap. You can come in and be very strategic to provide something that your target customer is not providing. And I want to kind of dispel some of the fears that a lot of entrepreneurs have when they come into this online space and they think about doing something, but they feel like the market is so saturated. How can I fit in? How can I stand out? Because everything is so, you know, overwhelming. You know, this person has a million followers. How can I fit into this business when I feel like I don't have no room to grow here? And let me give you an example. Because let's say you are a design company and it is you offer design, you know, a certain specific type of design, but you have a competitor that offers a, a specific design as well. They're both in the industry of interior design, but maybe your design is a little bit more unique because you know your target audience loves a certain type of style. Now, let me just give you some type of design styles that it even blew me away as I was even looking, you know, and doing this research to give you this content about the different types of styles that a design company could basically hone into. So this way they're not all over the place. They have studied, they know, I'm just going to focus on the design style because I know this is what my customer likes. So this is what I'm going to basically put out in my imaging. When I'm doing Instagram, I'm going to post this type of style of uh, photos. I'm going to offer this type of furniture within, you know, if you have like a third party that provides that type of style furniture and architecture, then this is what you're going to be known for. So let me just give you some of those design styles that kind of made me say, wow, this is a, a lot of, you know, choices that an interior designer can make if they're going into that industry. You have shabby chic. I used to love shabby chic. I don't know if you remember in that time period when shabby chic was very popular. It was that kind of worn, withered look, but it had a sort of an elegance to it. Then you have Art Deco. You have industrial style, which is not my favorite because I don't like seeing like pipes and stuff all over the wall, but you have a certain demographic that loves that type of style. You have modern, you have country, you have, let me go down this list, you have modern architecture, you have um, eclectic, you have so many different styles of design, and that's not even 
I haven't even went down the whole list. That's just to give you an idea of how many different designs that there are out there. So if your niche was going into interior design, but you're feeling like, oh, it's just so overwhelming. How can I fit, you know, stand out? Well, you know, and you survey your target customer and you find out the specific style of design that they love and that's what you become known for that's what you continue to push because let me explain this and what i've learned sometimes when we give people too many choices it's hard for them to make a decision and when it's hard for them to make a decision they make none right so you want to make sure that you are offering something that you know that they need that they like that it is something that they're going to continue to come back to and this way you Will be known in the market for that go-to person who does this style of design if that's within your niche right so i hope that kind of helps you because studying your competition gives you can give you really great results and if you are honed into knowing what your target audience likes then you can even come in and offer different type of style of uh, design advice and maybe even different type of accent pieces that are in alignment with that specific type of style. So I think you kind of get that. So I want to go to the next tip is testing and measuring. Now, this is an, uh, another area that entrepreneurs, and I know I get it, I was there, they don't measure and they don't test. Now, what does that look like? Because if you are doing a content strategy campaign, hopefully you're doing that, what it means is that you are testing to see when you put out this content, is this, are these photos resonating with your target audience? Are your um, videos resonating with your target audience? Is it giving them some type of information where they're taking it in and saying, wow, this is great information. I didn't know that, I need this. There was a, a video that I put on my Instagram and I was talking about vanity metrics because I think sometimes that we're so concerned with our numbers and sometimes we're in Facebook groups and we'll hear, you know, drop your link to your social media channels so we can follow each other, so we can, you know, raise our numbers. But I think sometimes the detriment to that is, am I drawing my target audience? When you have 10, 15, 20 people join your Instagram account or join your YouTube, is it really giving you the watch time that you need, is it, are they engaging with your content? Are they liking and sharing it? Are they commenting about it? Because with YouTube, there has to be watch time. So me just adding numbers to my, my uh, subscriber list is not going to basically boost up my viewer, my, my views. It has to be them actually engaging in the content. So be very mindful. And I would even you know, have that suggestion when you are dropping that link within that Facebook group, be very strategic about it. Say, this is what I do. I would love for those who need help in this area of their business or whatever it is that you do to join my Instagram account, follow me on Instagram or join my Facebook group or join my YouTube because I wanna provide you with great content. Because what that will do is it will weed out those who are just basically joining for a follow back. Because I mean, let's look at it on our side. When someone has followed us, we go back and follow them. But how many times have we really engaged with their content? Is it something that is in alignment with what you really need in your business? Because if not, then I'm wasting time even coming to your page to basically view your content because it's not something that I'm interested in. Not that we don't want to support people, not that we don't want to cheer them on, and help them through, you know, getting them to where they need to be. But is it really feasible as far as me spending that time and, you know, 10 people done signed up or 10 people done joined your Instagram account. So now you got to be loyal to 10 people just because they followed you. So we really have to think about when we're on our social media channels, how are we truly engaging with each other? Are we helping one another in the fact of that we, our businesses are in alignment, that we complement one another? So there's no problem there with helping one another to get 
to a certain point in their business because we can do a podcast. We can bring someone on that uh, part of the business that they may you know, help you with your business. Maybe they're good with the technical side of business. So you can bring them on on a podcast or a video to give more insight to your audience and how to grow their um, followership or whatever that may be. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So this way you're not all over the place as a entrepreneur, you're actually going in with strategy. You're actually going in and making sure that when you're creating your content, you know who it is for, right? So I wanna just leave you with one more tip because I have to sometimes write things down because I love to give a lot of content. So this way I'm not, you know, I want to give you value. I want to give anyone that comes to me great value. And, and let me just say this, because I know we as entrepreneurs, we look and say, oh, this person, they're so professional and they don't mess up. And because it's, to me, it's a flow. Once you get into the flow of what you do and you do it on a consistent basis, then sometimes it's, Sometimes it's just repetition. Maybe you're learning something new about the business and you share it with your audience. But basically it's something that you, a process that you go through every day. And when you go through that process every day and you're articulating it to your audience, then it comes off because you've been doing it. But sometimes we do you know, get a little bit overwhelmed. And if you got to have a paper, if you got to write down notes and look at them, so what? It's the information that your audience is coming from. It, that is coming for. So don't get caught up in, oh, well, it's not looking the way because we can get caught up in, I would say, perfectionism and it's analysis paralysis where we get so nitpicky on what we're doing and we don't do it or we just 86 it and we get discouraged. I don't care. Sometimes you know, you may have videos that you've done in the beginning that look like horrible, but as you continue to go, you build up that momentum. And each time it gets more better, it gets better quality, maybe better sound, and all of those things will fall into place. But my whole point of, of even saying this is the content valuable. That's what your followers are looking for. Forget about all of the bells and the whistles and whether how you look, if your hair's done or not done, is the content that you're relating to them, whether it's through an audio, a podcast, whether it's through a video, whether it's through a blog post, regardless of what type of medium that you're using, is the content something that's going to help them to the next step that they need to take? And the last thing before I close, and this is a tip, is you have to understand when you're creating content, and this is something that I went through, it was a process that I went through until I, it, till I, it clicked. Because I'm saying, oh God, I have to give them this content. Well, then I'm gonna give them everything. I'm gonna give them so much, then how am I gonna be able to create a product? And I done gave it all to them in the content. So let me say this. You wanna give something to someone that's a quick, when? Because if you are giving content to someone, and I'll just say, for example, if you're giving content to someone that is just starting, like, you know, building a blog, let's say that, oh, you know, ways to build your blog and monetize it and all that, that is something that takes time. And if they think that they're going to build a blog overnight and monetize it overnight, then they're setting themselves up for, for discouragement and disappointment because it takes time. Again, you have to do the research. Again, you have to find out who your target audience is. Again, you have to find out, you know, really what your audience needs from you so this way you can provide it. So within your content, what you are actually providing them is something that they can implement right away. So they can basically say, wow, this works. Wow, I did this and it worked. I, 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 you know, did the research and it works. And you have tools, free tools. You have Uber Suggest that you can go in and do keyword research. You have Quora, you have Reddit, you have all of these platforms that you can go on and do what I call social listening, where you are basically listening and getting feedback from what people are asking questions about. Let me tell you the gold mine of where to go and find, you know, information about your audience, go to Amazon, 
type in whatever that in industry you're in, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's weight loss or vegan, whatever that is, and find out what they're looking for because they're trying to buy the product either in a book or whatever that is to get the information. They'll go down into the comments or and they'll give you feedback. Either this book was or spot on or, you know, it fell flat. It didn't give this. And now you're doing your research. Now you're getting the key points, what the book did, what the book didn't do, what you can come in and do and what you can offer because the research is right in front of you. But sometimes we don't think out of the box and how to obtain the data. Take the data now bring it back and brainstorm it. Again, the video that <laughs> was linked up here, go and listen to it. So this way you will know how to go and brainstorm it and now provide that content that is gonna convert for your followers. So please like, comment, and share this with another entrepreneur who may be struggling with content creation. So this way you can help them on their journey as they are becoming a, a, a successful business owner as well as you, because we need to help one another in these times. It's not about competing against one another. It's about encouraging one another and helping us get to the next level in our business. Because the truth is there is enough space for everyone out there, but we gotta be about our business and we gotta make sure that we are serving our clients and customers with great value. So have a great day and I'll be with you on the next video podcast to give you some more tips to help you grow and level up in your business. Bye-bye.